The Viking speaks to you from his new boudoir, where the lighting is terrible, but you'll forgive, about his friend Marnie Nixon, who died a few weeks ago. I wanted to pay tribute to her because she was such an extraordinary lady, such a great singer, such a great artist, and I just loved her, and um, I'm glad to say she loved me too. And uh, so I, I knew her for a long time. Um, like a lot of people, though, I got to know her voice first by listening to the soundtracks of My Fair Lady, West Side Story, some others, where uh, she dubbed the voices of the leads. She was so good at that, probably the best. And uh, But she also had a big recording career uh, singing contemporary music and all sorts of classical music, uh, dating back to the 50s and all. She was on the complete Webern set that Columbia did in the 50s with Robert Kraft. He also did uh, the complete Schoenberg, and she was on those, singing all kinds of crazy things. Uh, just a little side note before I get into this. Um, I was studying the the only... Let's see, Schoenberg only wrote three... 12 tone songs. I was studying this old recording of it with a, a, um, a singer named Marjorie McKay, gorgeous mezzo voice. And I wrote Marnie, I said, Did you know Marjorie McKay? Who's this Marjorie McKay? Gorgeous. I was just, Oh, yeah. She sang Climb Every Mountain in the movie of um, um, Song of uh, uh, Sa Sound of Music. That was her singing Schoenberg. Anyway, side note these Hollywood people were really versatile. 12-tone Schoenberg, Climb Every Mountain. It's pretty amazing. Anyway, so I was going to be doing a recital with my good friend Diane McNair. And hi, Diane. Of the Schoenberg Cabaret songs. And Marnie did such an extraordinary recording of them. It's just so fantastic. Anyway, so I was a brash ute. And I looked her up in the phone book. And I said, I'm just going to call her up. And uh, this was probably 91, 1991. And I called her up, maybe 92, and uh, arranged a coaching with her. And I went over to her apartment where she was wearing what she always wore when she was at home, which is like a one-piece track suit and way too much eye makeup. Ha! <laughs> so funny. Every time I went over there, it was like, oh, God, Marnie. Anyway, that was like a constant in her life, too much eye makeup. She talks about it in her book. We'll talk about her book in just a minute. Anyway, so we became fast friends. I played and she sang. I was in heaven because I just adored that voice. I listened to so many recordings of it, of her. Anyway, she came to a recital of mine at Madison when I was a student. And she brought a flower, a beautiful rose, which I kept. Um, I'll tell you about that too in a minute. Anyway, so I was just friendly with her over the years. And then we kind of, you know, would fall into each other's path again. And then I did a, a gig where... Um, it was uh, through my friend June LaBelle. Hi, June. Uh, where I played the piano, and Mar this was at the Met Museum in New York. Marnie sang in the dark uh, into a microphone. They had a giant screen at there at the Met Museum, the Grace Rainey Rogers, getting to know you from um, King and I. And so we it, uh, it segued from the film soundtrack into Marnie and I do, it was just dubbing herself again. And we had to be very, very careful not to speed up or slow down. Otherwise, there was no way if we were going to, you know, get off. It had to be exactly right. It was a lot of fun. Anyway, I did a lot of little gigs with her. Um, I actually recorded one of my beloved Schoenberg Cabaret songs with her on iTunes. She directed a concert I did. Uh, she narrated some things I, I was involved with at the Austrian Culture Forum. I went over there for dinner, got to know her husband who had played trumpet and probably some other instruments in um, the, uh, imagine this, in the Broadway pit for Gypsy, as in Ethel Merman. Yeah, he was one of those guys. Anyway, he was a real curmudgeon. I was like, well, what was it like to play for Ethel Merman? He said, well, it was fine for the first week, then you get kind of tired of it. He was like that. It was a funny guy. Not that funny. Anyway, um, Marnie was a friend, and uh, she wrote this book, which you've got to read. Can you see this? What's it called? I always get the name wrong. I could have sung all night. Marty, you've got to read this book. Not only is it absolutely full of fantastic stories, but um, it's, his, it's hysterical and it's really sweet. She signed mine. She says, For Tom, the greatest, she underlines it twice, accompanist, and I thank you for your talent, camaraderie, and spirit. Love, Marty Nixon. Now, isn't that the sweetest thing? <sighs> I tell you, to live in New York and to have known some of these ladies and gentlemen 
that, you know, have had such long careers in the arts. And I'm just so blessed. Well, she was a friend. I got Christmas cards from her every year. I wrote her. She wrote one. Tom, I miss your spirit. She was great. She was a Pisces like me. Um, and uh, I'll tell you something funny about her. Um, is that, uh, and, 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 and maybe some people who also knew her had the same experience, is that her writing was really, she couldn't, I mean, it, she would write emails that were incomprehensible. And uh, I had no idea what she was talking about sometimes. I just have to call her up. Anyway, I asked her one time to write me a letter of recommendation for some kind of grant I was getting, which I didn't get. I had Marilyn Horn and Marnie Nixon write letters that didn't give me the grant. Anyway, um, and she wrote this this letter of recommendation, which it was incomprehensible. You couldn't understand it whatsoever. So I, I sort of just rewrote it. And she says, oh, fine. Anyway, she was really funny. And um, I'll tell you, you know, um, I think I mentioned in my tour and dot video about Alan Rickman. You know, sometimes I kind of, I don't want to say predict, but I can tell sometimes there's like a sixth sense when someone's about to die. Uh, two weeks before Marnie died, Marnie died, I threw away that rose. That rose. And uh, I just said, it's time. It's time. Uh, she was such a sweetheart. And little known fact, one of her children wrote the song that's at the beginning of Golden Girls. The theme song to Golden Girls. I don't know if you knew that. Anyway, he wrote that. It's on YouTube. You can see him singing it. She was such a lovely lady. So funny. So sweet. A lot of cre just creative energy going in all sorts of directions. Um, she would listen to you. She's just she didn't seem like a star when you were just sitting there in her living room talking about her studies with Lata Lehman and all of which she talks about in her book. You got to get the book. What's it called? I could have sung all night. Okay, so my dear friend Marnie, I love you. We all love you. Thank you.